What's up guys, it's me Lego Paradise here and today I'm going to show you how to build this working Lego grandfather clock. As you can see, it includes this really cool swinging pendulum that swings from side to side as the clock ticks. This compact mechanism fits perfectly within the grandfather clock and I've designed the clock itself to be a great size to go alongside your minifigure scale classic houses and old style buildings. It even includes some very fancy decoration around the sides and the top. The pendulum mechanism can be easily operated using a handle located around the back of the clock. You just turn the handle and the pendulum starts swinging. So let's take a look at what you're going to need to build your working grandfather clock. We'll build the clock in two parts. And here's everything you're going to need to build the first half, which is the mechanism. So once you've collected your pieces, we can start with a 3x3 plate and attach two 1x3 plates underneath it with a gap in between them. And then we can place four gold studs to act as the legs of the grandfather clock just on each corner of this assembly. Then on this side, Take two of your 1x1 one one bricks, the ones with the studs on the side, and place them with a gap in the middle. And in this gap, just place a Technic brick, also a 1x1 one one brick. Then we can build up the height with two 1x3 one plates. Then on top of that, some more of the 1x1s one one with the studs on the side. Make sure they're all facing outwards from the center. And another one by one Technic brick in the middle of that. Then we can place the final one by three plate and a one by three brick on top of that. A couple of one by ones, just the regular variety, the ones with no studs or anything like that. And then a one by one Technic brick in the middle of all of that. So now we can start fitting in each of these Technic holes. So on the bottom, we we'll use a 1x3 axle and that can slide through to the back there. Then onto the axle, a 1x1 one one gear piece. This will be the handle that can control this whole pendulum mechanism. So for that handle itself, we we'll use this 1x1 one one axle with the ball on the end, just so it's a bit comfier to hold and turn. Then moving up, in this space above it, we can slide a regular 1x3 axle. And that can go all the way through. So on one side you have the large Technic gear, and on the other side you have this other black Technic gear. And it's very important you actually use this gear in particular, since that's essential to the whole pendulum mechanism. So then finally on the top, you can fill in this Technic brick with one of these one by one loose pins. And now we're ready to build the pendulum. So for this, it's very important you use these exact pieces because there is a bit of weight involved to get the pendulum to swing properly. So on the front of the pendulum, you need to use a one by one round tile, just like that. Then on the back, a one by one round plate, a stud, and then on the back of this clip piece, use another stud. And this is where you can attach your corner plate. So just place that there for now. And then also to act as a counterweight, I've used this one by one square tile and I've just arranged it in a diamond shape because that's all helps with the balance of the pendulum. So now is the tricky part to attach the pendulum to the clock and attaching it is not the tricky part. The tricky part is getting the balance right. So when the clock mechanism hits the pendulum, it swings backwards and forwards. So you can see it's not swinging much at the moment. So to remedy that, just move this gold piece up a little bit. And then this time it should swing a little bit more. And you can just play around with that to get the best result. Again, this does take a little bit of work getting the mechanism just right. So you might need to just arrange each of these pieces 
up a little bit differently. You can see here I've just moved this bar piece up. That's definitely going to help with the swinging. There you go. That's working a whole lot better now. So like I said, just play around with that to get the spacing right because each piece is really differently depending on the variations that you have in your collection. But there you go, that's working pretty well. So now we can move on to finishing up this working Lego grandfather clock. Here are the rest of the pieces you'll need to build the second and final part of your clock. And once you've got your pieces, we'll start by building the side. So for each of the sides, we use three of these one by six tile pieces. We'll start with the right half of the clock. So this will use two of these two by three plates. Then on this side, use a one by four plate, a corner plate, and a one by two plate. And this way you'll have a gap just there for the pendulum mechanism to swing. Then in between the one by four plates, attach one of your bracket pieces. Underneath the bracket, we can use a round quarter tile and two of your one by one tiles, as well as a one by one plate in the middle. And this is where we'll attach the clock. So this is just a nice little fancy design that I've created around the face of the clock. And we'll finish that off with the other parts of the clock. So let's build the second side. This will go on the left of the clock, looking at it from the front. And this is similar build to the first side. So just clip all of these one by six tiles together with four two by three plates. This one's a lot more simple. Once you're finished with the side panel, use a smaller bracket piece, the one by two bracket over here. And we can continue the design of the bit of decorated wood behind the clock face. So there you can start to see how that will come together when it's all connected. Finally, to build the very top of the clock, we'll need three of these headlight bricks and just clip them behind the one by three brick. Then you can attach three more of the headlight bricks facing this way. So you have some going sideways and the other headlight bricks being attached upside down. So there you go, you should have this three by three platform and we can expand that with a couple of one by one slopes or cheese wedge pieces. And you can fill in the gap in the middle with a pair of one by one plates. Again, this is all just decorative at this point, but I think that looks pretty nice. Then to finish off the clock face panel, you can use your one by one quarter tiles and a one by one regular tile. And now with all of the pieces of your clock, it's time to join them together. So we'll start with the side panels and you'll need to get these lined up correctly. So they'll just go there. You'll know if they're lined up because that will match exactly with the bottom of the clock. So clip one on first and the second one on just after that. And it's a good idea to just give the clock a go and make sure it still works, which it looks like it does. So we can attach the top. And with that, your working Lego grandfather clock is complete. If you enjoyed it, be sure to check out my other working how to build videos where I build a wide variety of different Lego creations, all with their own unique functions recreated in minifigure scale. One of them which will match the grandfather clock perfectly is a working gramophone. So definitely check that one out if that sounds interesting. I always love seeing your comments and also be sure to like the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Don't forget to enable all notifications so you always know when my latest videos are out. I'll see you guys next time and thanks for watching.